Good morning and welcome to our Sunday online service of worship. My name is Elizabeth Harris. I'm one of the ministers here in the Falmouth and Gwenap Methodist Circuit. Today is the second Sunday of Easter. We're in the season of Easter now and we celebrate the risen Lord. Alleluia! Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Let's begin with a prayer and we'll sing our first hymn. Lord God, today we celebrate and thank you that Christ is risen from the dead and in him we know new life. Amen. Let's pray. 
Glory to you, O God, you have raised Jesus from the grave, bringing us victory over death and giving us eternal life. Glory to you, O Christ, for us and for our salvation, you overcame death and opened the gates to everlasting life. Glory to you, O Holy Spirit, You lead us into truth and breathe new life into us. Glory to you, Father, Son and Holy Spirit, now and forever. If we have fallen into despair, Lord, forgive us. If we have failed to hope in you, Lord, forgive us. If we have been fearful of death, Lord, forgive us. If we have forgotten the victory of Christ, Lord, forgive us. Give us the gift of faith and help us to grow in our discipleship so that we may become more and more like Jesus, in whose name we pray. Amen. Let's share together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. During Easter weekend and Holy Week before it, we had a number of different services to mark that really special occasion in the time of the church family. On Maundy Thursday, we washed feet, (laughs) we shared communion together as we remembered Jesus and his friends at their last supper. And on Good Friday, we spent time in reflection, just thinking about those last hours of Jesus's life as he was cruelly treated in his mock trials, as people called for his crucifixion. And of course, his death on the cross marked the darkest hour in history. But on Sunday morning, on Sunday morning, we celebrated Jesus risen from the dead in many of our chapels and churches. Hymns were sung, hymns of Easter joy, praise was said, praise was lifted up. The cross, which in many chapels had been stark and empty, was decorated with beautiful, fresh spring flowers, giving witness to the new life that we find in Jesus. At six o'clock on Sunday morning, we held a sunrise service at Gwenap Pit, which was a really special time of worship together. And many of our chapels and communities have decorated the crosses, decorated their churches, gone outside to sing hymns, to speak of the risen Christ. It's an important story in our salvation, isn't it? That account of Jesus, God's son, who went to the cross willingly for us, who died, but defeated and conquered death and sin, and was raised to life again, victorious, so that you and I might know the mercy and forgiveness of God, that our sins would be forgiven, washed away, vanished, dealt with. We come into God's presence and celebrate.
John chapter 20, verse 19 to 29. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand, and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have come to believe. Today, friends, I'm in Frogpool Chapel. Frogpool uh, has a lovely small chapel. It's a lovely place. It's well decorated. It's well maintained. And the people of Frogpool Chapel and friends from Roundabout have had a little project running recently to knit flowers. Here's a sample of them. Knitted flowers that have been made locally. Some of them are here decorating the chapel at the front and on the windowsills and others have been put onto the cross which has been standing outside outside of the chapel to speak to the people of Frogpool and the surrounding area that speak of new life of resurrection I wonder what the disciples thought when they met Jesus raised to life again. I imagine they were terrified. How would I have responded if I was in that situation? If I had seen my friend Jesus arrested, beaten, tortured, killed, executed there on a cross, definitely dead, his limp body brought down and buried in a tomb. Only a short while later, to see him again, alive and well. How would I have responded to that? How would you have responded if you came face to face with Jesus? In today's reading, we heard the experience of the disciples who were afraid and had locked themselves in a room. And Jesus miraculously appeared to them, terrified and Overjoyed all at the same time. Big emotional roller coaster, I imagine. But Thomas, one of the disciples, was missing. I don't know where he was. Perhaps he'd gone out to get food or was working or was busy with family. Who knows? But he wasn't there. And when his friends told him of that experience, understandably, he didn't entirely believe them. I've got quite a bit of sympathy for Thomas in this situation. We don't know an awful lot about him. It's likely he was a twin. His name means twin, Thomas and Didymus. We know he was a follower of Jesus. We know actually that he was courageous. 
He was brave. Earlier, when the disciples and Jesus had been traveling towards Jerusalem, and Jerusalem had, and Jesus, I beg your pardon, had spoken of uh, the impending trouble that was to meet them, that he would be captured and executed. It was Thomas who had spoken out and he said, let's also go that we might die with him. He was brave, he was committed. <laughs> and he did. He traveled with Jesus in those last days and he'd seen him die. But now the friends were saying he's alive, he's not dead. Thomas wasn't convinced. Unless I see it myself, unless I can put my fingers in those wounds and touch his side where he was injured, I can't believe it for myself. I wonder how the week panned out. <laughs> We're told in that reading, which only appears in John's Gospel, the other Gospels don't mention it to us, but we're told that another week passed and then the disciples were together again and Jesus appeared again. And he offers Thomas the opportunity to touch those wounds, but there's no need. Thomas sees him and believes. My Lord and my God is his cry. A man of faith, a man who was confronted actually with the impossible. His friend raised from the dead and believed it when he saw it. But Jesus says, blessed are those who believe without seeing. That's me and you. <laughs> we are removed from those events by 2,000 years. And that has, has some impact on our faith, doesn't it? We don't see the Lord Jesus risen from the dead in his flesh. We don't see that firsthand like the disciples did. We believe by faith. We trust in God. And we are still called to testify to the truth of the resurrection. Blessed are those who don't see and yet have come to believe. God gives us faith as a gift and he encourages us to ask for it. Lord, give me the faith that can remove the mountains to the sea. Give me the faith that tells me of the truth of the resurrection. Give me the faith that allows me to follow you, regardless of what's going on in my life, in my community, in my world, when things seem stacked against us. Give us faith. And that small amount of faith, sometimes as tiny as a seed, we're told, that's in us, is nurtured and grows and grows as we spend time with God, as we read scripture, as we study, as we come to church, as we listen to sermons, as we explore the Bible, as we pray together, as we do life together, people of faith, learning and loving and living in God's presence together. God gives us the gift of his spirit to enable us to grow in those circumstances so that we might say, just as Thomas did, my Lord and my God, a declaration of faith. One day, you and me, we will see Jesus face to face. But for now, we know him by faith. It's important that we nurture that faith because it's real, it's God-given, it's full and free, it's for our salvation so that we might know the love of God. So as we go through this time of Easter, may we really know Jesus is alive, he's risen, he's the conquering son of God and we can trust in him. Out of that faith, out of that trust, comes our declaration, Jesus, my Lord and my God. And comes our witness to others, whether it's through knitted flowers, 
whether it's through pointing to nature and the wonder of God's creation, lovely fresh spring flowers on the cross in Gwenup Pit or outside our chapels and homes, wherever, whether it's by word of mouth or the actions that we do, our deeds of love for each other. You and me are called to witness to the truth of this resurrection. As we, more and more, know the reality of the risen Jesus in our own lives, let's share that with those around us, as he called us to. Alleluia. Christ is risen from the dead. He's risen indeed. Alleluia. Thank you friends for joining me in worship this morning. It's good to celebrate the risen Christ and as you go into this week and as you travel through the season of Easter, be a witness. Tell the good news of the risen Christ. Our blessing for today. As we continue to grow in faith and discipleship, may we believe in the risen Christ and proclaim his love to others. And may the blessing of God, the Father, the Son and the Spirit be with us this day and always. I give.